that's what they intended? No, no. Uh, I'm talking about the public. The people. Yes, I know, but what, what are you going to do to halt this from happening again? We don't need this out to the public. It's uh, too dangerous. Y yes, but it was out of pure luck that the tape was found by an ex of glory. Okay. This has to be your main priority for now, this experiment you committed to. Yes. For a few weeks, I've been hearing this weird, like, buzzing sound in my house, and I think I might be able to find what's causing it. I think it's the vents. Like, here, I'll show you. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or anything, but it's so weird, too, because, like, my house doesn't have a basement or anything in it, so it's this, like, weird buzzing noise. Okay, maybe the camera's not going to pick up that one, but it's definitely going to pick up this one. See? There's like this buzzing thing. I don't know. Hello? I swear I was home alone. Mom? Is someone home? What? Who, who moved this stuff? What? What? Mom? Did you move the furniture? What? I don't understand. What the heck? make any sense. I need to get out of here.
what the hell. This looks a little bit normal. Why does this exist? It just doesn't make any sense.
Please, I'm just trying to get out. I'm just trying to leave. I don't want to be here. Please, I'm trying to leave. I just want to leave. Please, just get me out of here. What do you want? Please, I, I don't want to be here anymore. Just let me out. Stop! Stop! Mark, this is Team A. Do you read us? Hey, Team, this is Mark. I read you. What do you say? We need immediate arm support of room 14C. My team and I are being held at gunpoint by a hostile. I repeat, please oh. send immediate arm support to room 14C. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now these choices were not made lightly, 
and we're done for only the best of reasons. However, I want to make it abundantly clear that following the events of last night, it has been proven to us that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable. So, I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we understand them. On the morning of March 1st, a team of four researchers was sent into the complex to conduct a routine layout analysis. George Levy, Marvin Lee, Ronald McCarthy, and Peter Tench. At around 12.25 p.m., the group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing a previously accessed branch of hallways. As you will recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. However, uh, those ultimately yielded nothing, and as far as any of us were concerned, Tench had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. Now, for obvious reasons, that wasn't something that we could disclose to the public. So, roughly two weeks following his disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away from this institute and provide closure to the family. Uh, so, that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident. However, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tensha's involvement in this came to an end. Or, at least, that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th, at approximately 5.30 p.m., a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where over the following days a select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he had been gone. Uh, those tests yielded very little useful information. By all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still provided one very useful tool in understanding uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession, and in fact had documented the entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today, however, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. This is the hallway where Peter was last seen. They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the branch on the right here, pay close attention to the audio. Yeah, can you hear this? as a result of the cover story, and reversing that would be no easy feat. He 
he understood this and was willing to cooperate while we looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had anticipated. And all the while, Peter was sucked out here, waiting our to by. Uh, we did our best to keep him engaged, but it is hard to combat the effects of cruel sensor deprivation on the human brain. And as a result, uh, Peter's mental state took a toll. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, but around the end of week two, we noticed that he was starting to exhibit a number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Though we don't have reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, while he didn't express it outright, from what we could gather, he appeared to have deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. This all came to a head on the night of the 22nd, when while Tench was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above ground residence, he broke away from us and, using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. Presume that during the two or so days Tem spent in the complex, he met Doro with the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Immediately after firing a single shot from the Remington 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost, where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing to standard and through the lower offices. Given the abrupt and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation, it took our security team several moments longer than he ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process, though. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Now, this situation could have played out very badly, given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But, luckily, for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. Now, there's no easy way to say this other than to just say it. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside. The result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell forward into a large rock. Given the circumstances, it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a really man who gave his all to this project. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. That we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is, and has been, deceased. That is done, and there is nothing more to be extracted. <laughs>